Welcome everybody to the Rising from the Ashes live ceremony series. I am delighted, beyond delighted, to introduce to you today Jane Hardwick Collings. Jane is, I, call, I like to call her a mystical midwife, but she is a grandmother. She is a former home birth midwife for 30 years, and she's a teacher, writer, and menstrual educator. She gives workshops on mother and daughter preparation for menstruation, the spiritual practice of menstruation, and the sacred dimensions of pregnancy, birth, and menopause. Jane also founded and runs the School of Shamanic Womancraft, an international women's mystery school. Jane, so excited to have you here with us today. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. Hi, everybody. Thank you, Anna, so much for making all of this happen. It's an honor to be here connecting with you all around the world and during this summit. So my offering was on January the 20th and I hope for those who, of you who've heard it that it was helpful and no doubt you can find it if you haven't heard it yet. So um, I'm sure that's easy to find and Anna can help you if you don't already know how. So here we are live in the 24 hours before the full moon. And that means we are at a time when we can work with the energy of the moon. So just a little bit of information so that makes a bit more sense to you. The lunar cycle affects everything on the earth from the tides to the vegetation cycle to reproduction, the menstrual cycle, our emotions and our moods. So if we align with the moon by bringing consciousness to the cycle, we can work with the lunar energy at each phase. So from new to full to dark and new again, round and round every 29 and a half days. So at the dark moon, we let go. At the new moon, we plant metaphoric seeds for the new things and new ways that um, we want to see in our lives. And before the full moon now, we can dedicate the lunar energy to fullness and full potential, to whatever we want to see come to its fullness or full potential in our lives. So here we are right now at that moment in those 24 hours before the full moon. And we have this opportunity. So let's do it. We can make full moon prayers. So full moon prayers, intentions, or wishes, all the same thing. So part of being prepared today, there was a little bit of a to bring list. So if you've got those things, fantastic, just put them near you. If you don't, don't worry. You could actually use this session as the instructions to do later, but within this 24 hours. But I will continue now imagining that you do have your bits and pieces, which basically was simply a crystal that you could hold to hold the energy of whatever it is that you dedicate the full moon to. And paper and pen, that you can um, write down your prayers on. Okay, so <clears throat> if you have your crystal with you, then you can use that, as I said, to hold the energy of your prayers. And we're going to craft three prayers, three full moon prayers, one for yourself, one for your community, and one for the planet. Now, the one for your community can be any community that you're part of, including your family. It could be a small community or it could be a large community, like, say, women, for example. But, you know, so it's good for you to choose the community that you're making the intention or prayer or wish for, obviously, before you do the prayer, because it's going to be dedicated to them. So one for yourself, one for your community, and one for the planet. So. Perhaps there's been something or probably many things that have come up for you rising from the ashes, so to speak, during this summit that you would like to use this full moon energy to dedicate to. 
So perhaps it's, um, you know, something that's just beginning in your life or something that you need to approach with renewed energy or whatever it is, you'll know if there's something. And if there's not anything that's come up for you through the summit, then I'm sure you know what things in your life or in your community or to do with the planet that you could dedicate the energy of fullness and full potential to. So, <clears throat> so hold your crystal now if you've got it and have your pen and paper there with you and write these words down. I'll say them a couple of times so that you get them. On this full moon, On this full moon, I dedicate the energy, I dedicate the energy of fullness and full potential, of fullness and full potential in a prayer, in a prayer. And now we go into the three. So you could put number one for myself. And now maybe just leave a few lines there. And then the next one would be for my community. And then possibly if you need to um, be sure you remember the community that you're dedicating this energy to, you could perhaps put in brackets what which community that is for you now. And then leave space there to write that prayer in and then leave a few more lines and then, and for the planet or for the earth, however you want to phrase that. And for the planet, the earth. Now I'm just going to read all that again to make sure that you've got it. On this full moon, I, de I dedicate the energy of fullness and full potential in a prayer for myself, dot, 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 and a prayer for my community, dot, 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 and a prayer for the planet Earth, dot, dot, dot. So let's just take a moment now, and I will sit here and hold the space for you while you fill in the dot, dot, dots, just a little bit of time, and write down your prayer for yourself, your prayer for your community and your prayer for the planet. I dedicate the energy of fullness and full potential to blah, blah, blah. Please don't feel any pressure like you have to get it all right now in the next couple of seconds because you can add to these in the next 24 hours. But just, you know, we're just doing step one here.
So usually what happens in a situation like this is you write your prayers, with wishes, intentions, and then you think of a hundred more you want to add to it. So do that. You know, you can even just craft this with dot points and this and that and that. So I imagine that might happen for some of you, maybe everybody, maybe nobody, I don't know. But just feel free to add to this over the next 24 hours. Perhaps even your dreams will highlight some extra things you want to um, dedicate the energy to. So sorry if I'm talking over the top of you if you're still writing, but I'll, I'll just continue a bit now and say that the energy of the full moon is intensity. So that doesn't mean necessarily intensely good. It doesn't even mean intensely bad. It just means that whatever is going on in your world, your life right now will feel more intense. So that's what full moon energy does. It's like everything is in full illumination. I think the, um, a way that uh, an example of this, that uh, women and people who bleed can easily connect to is if you are bleeding in your menstrual cycle, having your period, at the full moon, then one of the ways the full moon impacts your experience of bleeding is it's like you, you retreat to your menstrual cave, so to speak, your red tent, and all the lights are on. So there's no hiding from everything that you need to let go of. So that's just an example of what I mean by intensity. So when you are finished, writing these prayers before the full moon tomorrow. And I'll just clarify the time of that in a minute. Ha have them on a document, you know, a piece of paper over, Make, maybe scroll it up, put a lovely ribbon on it or whatever. You don't have to do any of that. But the, it's kind of like be guided by the intensity of the full moon with how you want to continue this. And then when, when you're done before the full moon tomorrow, Put your written prayers and the crystal that you're using to hold them somewhere safe so it can sit under the full moon. Now, ideally, it would be in the open air. So that could be like on a windowsill or you know, under a tree in the yard or wherever, somewhere safe so nobody eats the crystal or the prayers. <laughs> and then let them be held in the universe and be seen by the full moon. And now also the next part of this is that once you make these prayers, they are heard, they are set in motion, so to speak. And the job to do then is to bring your attention to everything that arises for you to do with the prayers that you've just made. So, what arises for you might show up with new ideas or things you need to pay attention to or something to do with whatever it is you're dedicating the fullness of the lunar energy to. So make a list as these things arise because, you know, sometimes these things drop in quickly and then we forget about them. So make a list because this is all part of this process. Make a list because this will be your inner knowing participating in the unfolding of your prayers. So you may receive clues even, maybe the next piece, or maybe downloads and maps, like, I don't know, it might be that you'll receive information the, usually, the usual way you receive information. It may be a new way, I don't know, but be open to what arises for you after doing these prayers. Now, this might not happen until after the full moon. It might not happen until you put your crystal and written prayers out somewhere for the full moon, or it might be happening now. So pay attention because this is, this is the, the conversation, so to speak, that happens when we do this kind of thing. So just to pull this together now, if you'd like to hold your crystal and your prayers or your notes for your prayers or the 
pretend you're holding the crystal that you're going to use if it's not in your hand now. And just hold that together. And maybe you want to put that against your heart or against your hara or lower dantian or against your womb or wherever. You'll know. Maybe it's just holding it against your skin. You know. So hold that there. And close your eyes for a moment, feeling that. And now let's all take a breath in together. Breathe in together. And then out. And again, in together. And out. And one more in together. And out. Okay, now if you just like to open your eyes and see us all here. And let's all say out loud together. So I'll say it first. And then after I finish, let's say together the sealing words. And so it is. Okay, now together. And so it is. Okay, so now put your crystal and prayers down in front of you somewhere. Perhaps have the prayer list near you, nearby, so you can add to it. Remember your other pieces of paper that you can be writing down the things that arise or drop in. And now here we go in this space between now and then. <laughs> As the full moon energy intensifies and your prayers begin to unfold. So where I am in um, New South Wales near Sydney in Australia. The full moon for me is tomorrow morning at 16 minutes past six in the morning. So like in 21 hours. So I believe if I've got it right for where Anna is, that's 11.16 um, a.m. tomorrow morning. So on the 28th, I think. Yeah, because it's my, for me, it's on the 29th. We're all getting very good at this time zone thing with these global Zooms, but, you know, don't hold it against yourself if you get mixed up because it's very easy. <laughs> okay, well, thank you all and best wishes to you all and to Anna, so much love and appreciation and gratitude to you for not only dreaming up this rising from the Ashes Summit, but carrying on with it despite so much external drama and because of that I'm sure so many people everywhere have been soothed and had the opportunity to remember the other stuff that's going on in our world and in ourselves and our responsibilities to um, continue to grow and live up to our ideals that will be what's required for us to co-create the future for our great great grandchildren which is our absolute responsibility so thank you so much Anna oh my goodness thank you Jane so much this is such a beautiful practice uh, everyone who's watching we were supposed to start on the dark moon and then we had to postpone our launch and Jane was going to lead us through a dark moon and a new moon ceremony which if you've been with me since the beginning, which a lot of you have, I ended up leading those and we had to push forward. And it just, it's so perfect to have this practice, these prayers as we're wrapping up this series because tomorrow is the last day of the series. And I am just tingling all over thinking about my prayers for this community. I chose the Rising from the Ashes community to be the recipient of my full moon prayers and just like how wonderful and, you know, these practices are so almost so basic as to be overlooked. And yet they're so profoundly powerful when we align our intention with the moon. And, and that's just, you've just driven that home for me again. And I'm just so grateful for that. So 
I am just so grateful and I'm so excited for everyone here. Everyone is going to watch the replay over the next couple of days and to really dwell in this um, intentionality around what are we actually doing here? What are we bringing forward? And so I just really want to open this up to reflection from our beautiful group of souls who have gathered here today, like who would like to share anything or give some love to Jane or ask a question maybe? Everything is, is on the table. <laughs> Hi, my name's Paula. I'm Hi. calling from Omaha, Nebraska. And Jane, look what I have. <laughs> oh, Paula. I just wanted to say thank you so much for your offerings and you just, yeah, you're just such a beautiful crone that, that fills me up and nourishes me and has shaped my life. So thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. That's lovely, Paula. <laughs> I'd just like to say that that's so simple yet powerful and something that we can bring in every single month. It's not like it's a one-off, yay, feel good. Just like this is a beautiful tool. So I honor you and thank you so much. Oh, pleasure, Janet. And as you say, you know, this is, let's do this every full moon. And then the dark moon prayers, that would be the next thing that happens after this full moon. So in basically a couple of weeks at the dark moon, take the time to focus on what you need to let go of. And you can use the elements in different ways to do that. You could write that on a piece of paper and burn it, mm -hmm. or you could bury it into the earth, or you could blow it into the wind, or you could melt it in the water. And then on the, and so the dark moon prayers, the energy is very similar to the day before a period would start. So mm -hmm. you're very full of all the things you wanna let go of. So using the dark moon opportunity is the time for people who, aren't bleeding at that time or don't bleed at all or any more to let go. So dark moon letting go. And then the new moon is the time to call in the new things that you want to see be born or new beginnings in your life or your work or your relationships or whatever. And uh, it's as if you plant metaphoric seeds for the new things that you want at the new moon. And then you get the full moon again and then the dark and the new and then actually every single phase of the moon you can do different things like for example a couple of days ago at the gibbous moon or the waxing gibbous moon the phase that has a name um, before the full moon we have the opportunity to um, tweak what's coming to its fullness so so much energy with the moon to work with and to be fair, like it's happening whether we're paying attention to it or not. So that's the thing, you know. So if you use the lunar energy to uh, focus your intentions and prayers, that you will have choice around it. Because if you're not choosing it, whatever you're thinking, feeling or doing becomes that prayer. So just a question from Paola. What's the difference between the dark and the new moon? So a lot of difference. And so in diaries or on apps or whatever, if it says the dark moon and gives you a time, that means it's the new moon. So the time when the next lunar cycle begins. So it's called the dark moon because we can't see it because the moon sets with the sun. So it's dark, we can't see it. So um, the dark moon is basically known as a three day period similar to the full moon being known as a three-day period. So it's the day before, the day of, and the day after. And obviously those days are all different in their energy. So like, for example, here we are at the day before the full moon. So we're feeling the energy rising still. We're not at the peak yet. Then there's the 24 hours of the full moon, which is only a moment. And then there's the 24 hours after the full moon, which is still in the peak, but just off. So similarly for the dark and new moon, so the day before the new moon, we could officially call the dark moon because it's the last day of the lunar cycle. And then there's the moment of the new moon 
and the 24 hours of that. And then the first day of the new moon, which is actually day one, um, and then day two of the new lunar cycle. So again, the energy is similar, but different. So um, the, and so if you do menstrual prayers, blood prayers, it's a combination of similar things like the dark and the new moon prayers. So with your blood prayers, you say what you let go of with your blood and what you want that blood to fertilize and nourish as the new things you're calling in. So the significance of a blue moon, so a blue moon means that it's the second time in the calendar month that a, either there's a new moon or a, another full moon. So a blue moon me, it sort of has the connotation that it's unusual, you know, yeah, once in a blue moon, meaning that it's not very often that that happens. But actually, if you pay attention, it, it does happen, you know, maybe a couple of times a year. But the significance of that is much more modern in terms of modern in terms of the last 400 years or so, because that's just the um, association of the lunar phases with the Gregorian calendar, which is that, you know, January, February, March, April, May, June, July, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So mm. the Gregorian calendar actually has very little to do with the moon phases. And that's why we get a, um, a blue moon every so often because the lunar cycle doesn't appreciate or follow the Gregorian <laughs> calendar. <laughs> totally. In terms of our modern way, it's an unusual thing, but you know, so is the Gregorian calendar actually. I, I see that Jamie is unmuted. Jamie, do you have a comment or something you'd like to share? Yeah, I have. Um, well, first of all, thank you. This is beautiful ceremony and simple and I need simple. Um, I'm, I'm excited about. Um, so there's always stuff to manifest and it's always there's always spinning around. I, I want to do this and this is but to simplify it and, and make it concrete and put it on paper and give it to the moon and then look for it. I'm really excited about looking what comes right now because I feel like I see things, you know, all the time. And I sometimes I write them down because I think, oh yeah, that's a little bit of a download. But right now I'm excited to look for it. So thank you for that. Um, and also I was looking that um, I'm in Glendale, California and that um, it says the next full moon is 11 16 a.m do i put my crystal and my scroll out tonight or is it in tomorrow night in the light of the full the the true full moon when does that when do i do that part all of the above like so okay you can you could put it out there now say okay it wouldn't matter but so long as it's out there at some mm -hmm. point around this Full moon period is fine. Like you can't really get any of this wrong, you know. The fact right, that right. <laughs> That's why I like simple. <laughs> yeah, you know, simple is good. We just mm -hmm. tend to complicate things so much. And another way I just would like to share what what I mean by the simple and the looking for the things that arise is, and I I say this at my workshops that writing intentions or setting prayers and making wishes is not like writing a shopping list. So what I mean by that is you may not actually <clears throat> get exactly what you ask for, but what mm -hmm. you will get is an opportunity to see everything that you have created or set up in your life that stands between you and your intentions, wishes, or prayers, because those are the things that you have created that you need to deal with in order to actually receive or manifest or get or whatever you want to say, mm -hmm. the things you pray for, wish for, intend for. So that's a really important part of the process to pay attention to. And also to add that caveat of like, be careful what you ask for. Because <laughs> if you put, if you make a prayer, I give thanks for radical transformation now. You know, like that's pretty big and could end up being quite a uh, dramatic and massive experience. So, you know, I always suggest to add things like gently or 
in the perfect time or for mm. the highest good of all or whatever. So, you know, that is just like the little details for how to do these, but just like sometimes people make prayers or set intentions and, oh, nothing happened, only, only just the usual bad stuff. So the usual bad stuff that might happen are the kind of red flags trying to get our attention to, yeah, sure, you want inner peace? Well, you have to get off your screen at least a couple of hours before you go to bed so that you sleep, so that you can re heal and restore and, and perhaps come toward inner peace, for example. So that's the important thing to remember. Thank you, Jamie. Thank you. <laughs> I know more people want to share. I can feel it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is just so great. And also, you know, like you can encourage everybody in your household or work or wherever you are to do this. Yeah. And um, I think the most encouraging thing to, to um, or way to do it is to say, well, you know what, if you're not bringing intentionality to this, then whatever you're thinking, feeling or doing becomes your full moon prayer. So what are you focusing on? Because that means you're dedicating the energy of fullness to that. So, you know, like. That's a great, <laughs> great reminder. <laughs> like you said, the moon is there, it's doing its thing no matter what. And what are yeah. we lending to that? That's so yeah. good. To remember. Also, I think that the time that we notice that the most is at a new moon or the beginning of anything, actually. You can do new moon like prayers at the beginning of something. And um, that's so important because at the beginning of anything, whatever you're doing, thinking or feeling will affect what, un what unfolds and how it unfolds. So like another, always I go to the menstrual cycle as a great example of this because the women and people who menstruate who know that know exactly what I mean and they can explain it to others. But if you start your menstrual cycle, for example, day one with a feeling of, ah, grr, I don't want this to happen to me. Well, that's the energy that will unfold the whole cycle. So that's a really powerful explanation for how this stuff works in terms of if you're not actually focusing and thinking about it, whatever you're focusing on will be your prayer. So yes, karma, do it. <laughs> with your blood, let go of whatever you need to let go of. And Saying all this around this, the lunar cycle, we also have the opportunity to do this same sort of prayer, wish and intention making at the seasonal, within the se seasonal cycles. And as I said, the menstrual cycle. And if you menstruate, then that's the dominant experience. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't matter if it's a full moon, if you're bleeding, then it's as if the middle of winter, for example. But as I said earlier, the lights are on, so you can't avoid seeing what you need to let go of. Thank you, Helga. I appreciate you're too tired to speak. And yes, Imbolc is right around the corner. Perfect time to plant seeds for the coming year. Exactly. So make sure, especially for new moon and in bulk prayer. So in bulk for everybody who doesn't know what that is, is the first day of spring. So that's February two or so in the Northern hemisphere. In the Southern hemisphere, February two is La Masse or the first of three harvest festivals or the beginning of autumn. So like in the Southern hemisphere, it still might be hot, but it's the end of summer next week. And in the Northern hemisphere, it still might be cold, but it's the end of winter. Yeah, Groundhog Day next week. So the idea, and what I mean by that is that's like according to say a sundial, you know, like again, the seasons we have elected to give dates to are more around the Gregorian calendar than actually the journey of the earth around the sun, which is actually what the seasons are determined by. Like for example, as I said, a sundial, like if you think of Stonehenge, for example, a gigantic, 
um, sundial at various times in the year, the sun moves and that's when the seasons shift. So next week, the in bulk prayers for you in the Northern Hemisphere. So make sure you write them down. Make sure that you see what you've declared your, your new intentions for the year and watch them unfold because it's so helpful to see what happens in your year based on whatever you were doing at Imbolc. So that's for the Northern Hemisphere. And for those of you in the Southern Hemisphere, La Masse next week, it's the time when we see the harvest of the growth cycle from what we metaphorically planted at Imbolc, at our Imbolc, which is, is August 2. So that was August 2 last year. So Southern Hemisphere people, whatever you were doing then, like deep in lockdown probably, and deep in COVID 2020, whatever was beginning or whatever began then, you're, we are now getting the chance to see the first harvest of. So it's such an awesome way to watch how this hashtag this shit works, works, and likewise faster with the lunar cycle. And also, obviously, again, to say with the menstrual cycle and um, every beginning, every new beginning, write down what your intentions are and watch them unfold. And as I said earlier, you get the chance to tweak those as you go. So much opportunity to live the magical life. Yes, I love it. And I love that, that, that invitation and the reminder, like it's a work in progress, like change it, add to it. It's, you know, we're always molding the clay and fine tuning and it's just, you know, go with it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> always making and remaking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Because we are all as if the earth, you know, and we watch the earth go through her seasons and you, we see things be born, grow, come to their full growth fruit, harvest, decay, die, and then rebirth. Same thing over and over. This cycle, it's the same cycle for everything. And it goes birth, growth, full bloom, harvest, decay, death, rebirth, growth, full bloom, harvest, decay, death, over and over and over and over. Mm -hmm. And for some things like the vegetation cycle, it's literal, like we see the uh, things sprout and grow and fruit and harvest and decay and die and then be reborn and then for other things it's the metaphorical version of that so we are all as if the earth going through that vegetation cycle with everything everything goes through the same cycle just different speeds mm -hmm. so even this conversation this zoom call this ceremony will be going through the cycle and as we come to the end of this we start to see what we're left with, what the harvest is, what the, what the, um, also the seeds. And at the end of the cycle, not only do you see the results of the cycle through the metaphoric seeds or literal seeds, but also you get to see a glimpse of the future because the seeds, whether they're metaphorical or not, actually hold the whole new beginning of the next round of being of whatever whatever you ask for, on and on and on, because it's a spiral, right? It's not even a, 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 a complete circle. It's just on and on and on. I love that. So great. Oh my goodness. So fun. We're all going to be putting our crystals out on the windowsill <laughs> tonight. <laughs> Wonderful. Does anyone else have anything they'd like to share or more questions? Thank you for being so generous with your time too, Jane. This is just so fun. Medicine wheel teachings. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Cross-cultural all around the world, same stuff, different words. Same for everything, really. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Reminding us that we're all indigenous children of the earth. And that this is this is our birthright and also our responsibility, right? To, you know, in terms of like our prayers for the earth and the planet and, and what are we what are we going to lend our intentions to and the fullness of our desires when it comes to 
honoring our earth, honoring where we come from, honoring where we're taking this spaceship. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And you know, like an ultimate dream here would be to do this in community, like everybody doing it together. So like, for example, in workshops or gatherings that I'm holding, we would do a group ceremony of this and you can just make that be however you want, depending on how much time you've got. And you can do all kinds of things. You know, you can sing your prayers, you could dance your prayers you could uh, walk your prayers, like whatever. And um, also uh, there was another thing I was gonna say, I can't remember now, hopefully it'll come back, but the continuing of doing this stuff, actually, as you said, our responsibility. Oh yeah, I remembered. So another ultimate way of, of this sort of thing and a dream of mine and many menstrual educators and, and people who, teach the cycles would be to gather a group of bleeding women, bleeding people to all gather together and to pour their blood together into the earth, returning our blood to the earth, letting go of whatever it is that we need to let go of and calling forth whatever it is we need to do. So doing that together is just like so powerful. So just looking there's a message, I'll just read that from Clarion. Clarion, sorry if I said that wrong. Clearing. It doesn't matter if there's no moonlight coming, it's just the clouds in the way, the moon will be there. You'd probably notice even at a full moon, if it's cloudy, there's still this kind of weird light that's not there usually. So mm -hmm. um, you could put them, just like be guided to do it however you know you need to do it. Like, let's not think there's a right or wrong way to do this. If you're, you are, we are all priests or priestesses of the earth, so be, be the priestess of the earth and know that you know how to do this and put the crystal wherever you want to put it and the, and, and the prayers. And even if you forgot, it wouldn't matter, you know, like it's just the more you put into something, the more you get out of it. So I see your windows face north, never see the full moon in the north and south facing windows. Yeah, I mean, just remember that the, the moon energy is totally touching everything everywhere. Mm -hmm. regardless of windows and and clouds yeah and moon lodges yeah that's the other term often used for the bleeding time bread tent moon lodge menstrual hut menstrual cave blood space it's a it's a, a liminal space it's a space in between it's like the void and a place we need to honor in our cycle because if we don't honor when we're bleeding, we pay for it. And that's what PMS is all about. Mm. Mm -hmm. Erica, I see you're unmuted. Did you want to share something? Yeah, I, I'm in the decay cycle. Being 66, I'm not midlife anymore. I've been watching you, Jane, so I know your whole deal there. But um, what's interesting is, is I've been feeling kind of funky the last couple of days. And this woman I just talked to said, well, it's almost a full moon. And I'm thinking, it's, I've been nauseous, headachy, bloated. You know, I've got all the symptoms <laughs> uh, oh. that I used to have. And really, I had the worst PM. I had horrible, horrible, horrible uh, menses time. So I was so grateful for them to be over and encounter menopause. Oh my God. And I totally lost myself and my identity there. So it's been a wonderful rediscovery journey, <laughs> but it was just the whole fact that I'm feeling like I'm ready to bleed <laughs> is really mm. what I'm feeling like, you know, and I just kind of picked up on all that, you know, the connections to that. I'm, I apologize for jumping in late. I didn't really realize this was on yet. I'm, I'm, I was catching up. On, I was just doing the water ceremony. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, I miss you guys. I'm so glad to be here and be back and part of the group again. I, I've been working and just otherwise can't get on the lives, but I'm making a huge effort to be here. Totally missed it yesterday. It's all good. <laughs> I just watched it. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, Thanks, Erica. Thank you. You were, let me just, um, you reminded me to say that for those of us <laughs> who don't have a menstrual cycle. Right. So that would be people who don't have wombs, so men and others. And um, 
those of us who do have wombs if we're pregnant or breastfeeding and the cycle hasn't come back or having no cycle for another reason like it could be that you are um, on a hormonal contraception or uh, that you are extremely athletic or very, very thin because you have to have a certain amount of fat on you to have a menstrual cycle that plays out. Or if you're perimenopausal, which is sort of around menopause and you don't know what's going on, or postmenopausal, so anybody who doesn't have a menstrual cycle for whatever reason, then the cycle is the lunar cycle. So that's the point because the menstrual cycle and the lunar cycle are basically the same. And the story goes that before, um, before electricity dominated our lives, all women bled on the dark moon and ovulated on the full moon due to the effect the moon has on our hormone production, etc. So, you know, not that long ago in our history and history, women would have been menstruating at the dark moon, every, everybody, and, you know, obviously there would be people who weren't, there's not everything happens to everybody, but the energy would be there for us to menstruate on the dark moon and new moon and uh, bleed, I mean, and ovulate at the full moon. So, so that's an important thing to remember as well. I'm just reading something from um, Paula here. Yeah, I know, you know, like, exactly. I hope you can all read that, but basically saying that Paula didn't know that the bleeding she was doing, the period she was having when she was on the pill was not actually her menstrual cycle. Yeah, a lot of women people take the pill without realizing what's actually going on. You know, it's, it puts us into this kind of uh, pseudo pregnant state such that the hormones in our body are at the level that our body would be experiencing if we were pregnant. So we're in this sort of pregnant kind of limbo and our experience of life is kind of goes from the menstrual cycle goes like this. I'm just drawing a picture of a wave going up and down and then if you imagine like the extremes of that and then without the menstrual cycle, so the lunar cycle or being on the pill, that those uh, waves are cut short above and below. So the experience is, is less, less high and less low and a little bit kind of, well, some women call it a bit numb or a bit in limbo. Mm -hmm. They don't really have the same experience as what it's like without a cycle. And I think the other really important thing to know about the pill is that when we're on the pill, we're attracted, women are attracted to men that they would not ordinarily be attracted to. Because of the hormones, when you're on the pill, you're attracted more, because you're in this sort of pseudo pregnant state, you're attracted more to men who are like family, because you're pregnant and you want to be cared for, as opposed to who you are attracted to in and obviously I'm talking in a heterosexual situation, which I know isn't everybody, but I'm just giving you this information. When you're not on the pill, you're more likely to be attracted to somebody who's very different to you, not like you in a family way. And that's so that your um, the, the increases the likelihood of survival of the combination of that egg and sperm because the chromosomes are different, not, fa not familiar family sort of style. Mm -hmm. So that's a really important thing for couples who are using um, hormonal contraception, especially the pill, um, to go off the pill a long time before you're going to have babies so you can actually see if, if he still smells right, so to speak. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's pretty profound. I didn't know that. That's like, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> yeah big woe yeah like oh i think of you as my brother whoops <laughs> <laughs> you're more like a brother to me and we're married uh oh <laughs> yes H hannah right you don't get on if you just get on with your menstrual cycle it because it's not a big deal then the menstrual cycle will do whatever she has to do so that you know that she is a big deal that is so patriarchal too, right? This whole yeah, idea exactly. that it's just like, oh, well, men don't bleed. You should guys should just deal with it. Mm, yeah, exactly. 
Yeah. So Kelly's saying um, a little bit about the book I've got on preparing for the menstrual cycle. Yeah. So I've, um, it's called Becoming a Woman and it's, it's written for girls approaching the menstrual cycle. And I mean girls of every age because most of the girls who grew up didn't get this information about the menstrual cycle and it's never too late and it's the opportunity to understand not like beyond the anatomy and physiology like beyond the idea of the sex ed style of menstrual cycle because like you know I think it's I can't remember exactly but something like you know 99% of our menstrual cycles is probably a little bit less than that do not result in pregnancy so there's a lot more going on besides fertility in the menstrual cycle it's the cycle that's running our lives like the lunar cycle is running everyone's lives too so it's really important to um, connect with your lunar cycle regardless of whether people say that's a good idea or not you must and because there's so much to be learned from our menstrual cycle. The menstrual cycle, to quote Alexandra Pope, who um, co-runs the Red School in the UK, Hannah, maybe you know her, the menstrual cycle is the barometer of our well-being. Mm -hmm. So everything um, that shows up in your menstrual cycle as some sort of um, deviation, say, from the norm or any kind of um, disruption or even pain, actually, is a sign that there's something in your life that's out of balance that your menstrual cycle is trying to let you know so like it's look the thing is that anything to do with the feminine or women that's put down or invisibilized or made a joke of or criticized or even hated and turned into a taboo is a clue that it holds power so yes. you know look at it that way. Yeah, brilliant. I know some people have to file off. So I just wanted to make sure if you're not connected with Jane, get connected. She's amazing, as you can tell. So um, Jane has a, a gift for for all of us. And it's called her story. It's and it's all about the effects of the patriarchy on the feminine. And as she mentioned in in the conversation that we recorded earlier, like it's not bedtime reading. No. <laughs> you know, don't read this before going to bed unless you want to have bad dreams. <laughs> <laughs> but um, follow that link, and you can get that, and and also um, stay connected and find out about um, Jane's offerings. Um, it looks like Kim is unmuted. Do you, do you have time to stay on, Jane? For yes, a just bit more? maybe about ten more minutes. Okay, great. Kim, did you just, want to share something? I just wanted to, I wanted to ask, I'd always heard that um, women, um, family, sisters, moms, and then like college situation, that their, their periods will sync up. Is that true? Yes, it's totally I, true. I thought, I, th I mean, it happened in my family. Exactly. Yeah, okay. so there's a, lot of, there's a lot of written work now, you know, some books that have come out and scientific papers saying it's not true because it can't be necessarily um, re uh, replicated in a scientific way. You know, science wants things to be replicated in different conditions to prove it. But like you said, you know, maybe it's not replicable, but it actually is what happens. <laughs> okay, and I wasn't crazy. Why? You know why is the question and um that's the thing that we don't know however i think it's kind of obvious that maybe it's because everybody who's in that situation is under the same influence of the same light yeah. which would be the thing that's impacting their hormones and i have heard that um when new groups gather like uh, say the college situation or a work situation that the yes. women there they align their menstrual cycles yeah. with the with the alpha female so that's interesting oh, oh that's fascinating <laughs> i'll have to go back and look yes i'll have to go back and look at that one well, yes erica I, yeah as you say yeah, i still it, think it has to do with getting all those women pregnant i mean it goes back to the seed and the sperm i mean and a mm. red tent i mean it all goes to the red tent Every girl yeah. coming of age, I give that book to. And I say, you may not get it now, reread it, hang on to this book. <laughs> cool. But it's like, that's, that's, the, 
that's what it was set up for <laughs> anthropologically mm, exactly. speaking <laughs> yeah yeah and okay, erica yeah. yes in in at work it's it's classic yeah. and yeah um you know using your menstrual cycle for your work i mean for everything but especially around your work can help so many things like so we have superpowers and we haven't got time to go into this now but i'll just say i'm nearly finished a book writing a book called blood rights r-i-t-e-s blood rights r-i-g-h-t-s the spiritual practice the spiritual practice of menstruation and in that i will share all sorts of practices and 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 experiences and stuff but we have superpowers around each sort of phase of the menstrual cycle and i just say one just because this is really a powerful one that when we're ovulating so when we're um at the peak of our menstrual cycle and ovulating that's the time for say exa for example at work if you need to give a presentation and you need to convince everybody that your idea is the greatest do it when you're ovulating because you have people eating out of your hands at that point so that's that's a power to harness which is actually like our own personal inner full moon so yeah. use the menstrual cycle that's brilliant yeah so brilliant i want yes, i want to echo what what hannah said i wish i'd known about this 35 years ago <laughs> yeah so exactly so so make sure you tell all yes. the women you know there's much more going on in the menstrual cycle than we've been led to believe absolutely and that actually where we are now culturally all around the world is experiencing a pandemic from a long time ago called menstrual taboo yeah. menstrual taboo and what that does is it results in menstrual shame which is the thing that affects everybody everywhere even if they don't think it does because it can't not it's yeah. part of the patriarchy menstrual shame and yeah. the sad thing is that menstrual shame leads to body shame so like we know this this is not a guess or it doesn't need to be proven it already has been menstrual shame leads to body shame and body shame leads to low self-esteem and low self-esteem leads to all manner of wounded behaviors that mm -hmm. probably run in your family mm -hmm. and include things like eating disorders and self-harm and yeah even and actually so sad for teenagers because they get it too menstrual shame that's they're initiated into menstrual shame at their menarche or first period one of the effects menstrual shame has is dangerous and negative sexual decision making so mm -hmm. you know like that's not okay yeah. so we need to educate and re-educate all all of us including men and people who don't menstruate on the fact that the menstrual cycle is not something to be ignored because if you ignore it she will do as i said everything she can to get your attention and the way we see that collectively all around the world is menstrual cycle pathology is always on the increase you know it's and like infertility for example is a menstrual cycle pathology so like endometriosis polycystic ovary syndrome adenomyosis irregular painful period blah 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 that's the menstrual cycle saying excuse me i will not be ignored yeah yeah it's a wake-up call and yeah that's a form of the intergenerational trauma that we need to heal is that the 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 shame of menses absolutely absolutely Wow. Yeah. This is very yeah, yeah, I think, think, yeah. um, Go ahead, I think the, the menstrual shame is is horrible, but menstrual neglect is almost become normalized. Like it's men don't think they're doing wrong when they don't acknowledge a woman's period or they just think that's the way it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And I think that's on it's on our part to educate them. I mean, I've been married for 24 years. My husband told me the other day, he has no idea when my menstrual cycles happen. Well, and that's about to change. <laughs> I have no idea how that works. But I mean, just the <laughs> fact that when we're the nurturers, so when you know someone's sick, we nurture them. When someone needs caring, we care for them. And menstrual cycles, while they're not a sign of illness, it's a sign that we need to be given extra attention we need to be cared for and nourished so those who don't experience those menstrual cycles need to kind of be educated on 
no, this is a thing and there's nothing wrong with it. And you need to be, you know, leave an extra bottle of wine at the door and just close it gently, <laughs> case, you know, <laughs> or something like that. Brownies. It's all about brownies this week. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. And also that um, reminds me to say that for those of us who are mothers of young children, that that's another time when this education about the menstrual cycle is happening. Yeah. So for mothers of little people, that how you menstruate, and I don't just mean bleed because like that's just a small part of the cycle. That's the most obvious part, but um, the visible part, but how you tend to yourself when you're bleeding, when you have little children is teaching them about how a woman needs to look after herself when she's bleeding. And so it's an opportunity to both teach that and also normalize the menstrual cycle and bring it out of sh hate, shame and hiding. And it's not like you get to go to the toilet on your own anyway. So you need to use it as an opportunity to teach. So here, mummy's bleeding again, or mummy's blood's here now. Oh, I need to make sure I have a special rest today or whatever. And this is especially so for the young boys because this is the time when they get to see this. And, it, you know, at some point, the boys will stop following you to the toilet and stop asking you why, why, why. And then that's when you haven't got the chance anymore to be doing this. So do it while you can. Normalize the menstrual cycle and teach your ch little children about it. That's great. Oh, Hannah, right. I hear you. Yeah, I mean, like me too, actually, in my first marriage. So it's definitely a thing. Yeah. Wow. Yep. Shame during menopause as well, you know, like, so um, again, it's such a clue that it holds power mm -hmm. and it so does. Mm -hmm. So does. Mm -hmm. I hear you, Hannah. Trust the process, trust, trust your life journey unfolding in the perfect way. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. Jane, you are just like a godsend and a font of amazing information and just able to connect these dots for us in such a brilliant, um, non-fussy way that just feels so good and, and easy to to just relate with and assimilate. And I am just thrilled for today. I'm so grateful to you. This has just been such a lovely experience. And in some ways, I'm, I'm so glad that you came towards the end because I had so much anticipation. <laughs> I got to, I'm into delayed gratification. So it was really <laughs> good. good. And this has just, just been lovely, lovely, lovely. And I just, I, I can't wait for the comments on the replay of this. People are going to really have have a ball and just fantastic ah <sighs> just so thank happy you. thank you thank you and i'm so happy that your dream came true <laughs> and um also just to say everybody when you get that her story the um gift from me please feel free to share it with everybody yeah great thank you thank you so much and um Blessings. And so tomorrow is our last day of live ceremonies. And I know, I know. And I will be very cold and leading a fire ceremony outside. And TD, I apologize. It's going to be late for you. <laughs> but uh, sleep late the next day. And, um, you know, uh, you'll, you'll get the details about the time, but it's 6 p.m. Mountain Time in the U.S. So that's 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern for the U.S. folks, and then in Europe and abroad. I don't know exactly what time that will be, but it might be the next day. It'll be the next day for Jane and and uh, everyone in in Australia and New Zealand. But thank you so so much, Jane. My heart is so full. My womb is full. <laughs> My moon is full. We're all full, <laughs> and just just loving all of this. You're getting so much love in the chat. Thank you so Aww. much, everybody, for being here and participating and lending your, your female energy to this, um, to this ceremony today. And, I, and our wish is that all of your full moon prayers come to fruition. Mm -hmm. So thank, thank you, you so thank much. you. Yes, 
All right. Bye, everybody. Thank you so much for a great day. Okay. Bye-bye. <laughs>